Christ we share. <laughs> Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for joining us today. It truly is a blessing that God has found it in his plans for all of us that you would all be here today. I am so, so touched you have found it through your prayers to prioritize wholesome, God-centered entertainment over worldly, secular nonsense. You know, maintaining emotional purity in all areas of your life can only aid your quest to rid your life of sin. I truly thank the Lord for touching my heart and allowing these words to flow through my hand. So without further ado, this is Keeping Sweet in Summer, an original work by Brianzel Pepich. Thank you, sister. Lights come up on a small battered kitchen table where Abigail is sitting with the Bible open. Ellen enters. I finally got Lucy and Eva down. Lucy sure cries a lot. She's fussy. You dote on her. She's my baby. Andrew would never allow me to coddle ours like that. Well, Rudy would not interfere with my mothering choices, much like I would not tell him how best to run a business. I leave that to his boss. He is still your headship, complementarianism or not. My husband simply puts his trust in me that I will raise our children upright. <laughs> it's Lucy. I'll get her. Her cell phone ring. Hello, my love. The kids and I are still at Abigail's and Rudy's. Oh, I will tell her. Oh, we'll be home way before then, don't worry. All right, see you tonight. I love you. Ellen hangs up and returns to her cleaning. Abigail enters with Lucy and the baby's room. Oh, stop cleaning, you. I've got this. I think she just wants to be cool. Ellen continues cleaning. Do you pick her up every time she cries? Not every time, but I'm not going to just leave her there to have a meltdown. Well, hmm? just mind that you keep an eye on her then. She's got a defiant heart. She's <laughs> just a baby, Ellen. Eva is sleeping just fine at her age. The Lord has blessed you with wonderful children, Ellen. Let me see her. I will put her back down. Soft crying is heard off stage. Abigail washes dishes. She breaks a mug, gets frustrated, and sits back down at the kitchen table. Ellen begins to make tea. I know I'm overstepping. I don't mean to question your mothering. It's just, Satan is not deterred by age. It is important that she learn obedience and submission now before sin can set in. I don't think she's being purposefully obstinate. She's a baby. Babies cry. I have some books I will lend you. You may see things differently. It's fine. It's just a bit difficult with the other two, you know? When it was just Max, things were so much easier. In raising godly children, you only serve to glorify God further. It is imperative that you raise them up in the Word. I know. It is the Lord's work. I know. I just didn't expect it to be so all-consuming, you know? Mom made it seem so easy with all of us. Well, we were not easy. We were just as prone to sin as any other children were. Raising children upright is an effort. But what else are we to do? Not teach them the word? Ellen sits down and passes her sister a cup of tea. When you were growing up, how many kids did you want? Like, how many did you think God would provide me? No, no, how many did you want to have? Children aren't a choice. <laughs> They are a gift directly from God. It's up, not up to us to decide to put limits on things we have no earthly understanding of. No, I know, Ellen, I know. But did you ever think, wow, I think five is a really good number of kids to have. I hope God gives me five. I would never attempt to undermine God's wishes in that way. Do you not view your children as blessings? No, no, I do. I very much do. I guess I just didn't expect my gifts to be so much work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you need to work on your contentment. You can't begin to understand what God has in store for you. He never gives us more than we can handle. You're right. I think I need to pray about this some more. Yes. My husband and I have decided we will also pray for you. <laughs> That's very kind. I'll pray for your family as well. When we surrender fully to God, he provides us our every need. Thanks. You know, your life serves as testimony for others. 
lead through example so that our little brothers and sisters may also hope for godly marriages. My being a bad mother means our brothers and sisters won't be able to get married? That's not what I said. That's what you meant. <laughs> I was simply saying that through your dedication to the Lord, you serve as an example. Zach has modeled his courtship on your relationship with Rudy. But he has done no such thing. And Andrew <laughs> mentors Jacob weekly. Perhaps taking on a mentee of your own will allow you more insight into our actions and into our actions that they are larger than us alone. Like have someone come over for Bible study in me? Yes, or as accountability while you are home all day. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. I'll pray about it. See that you do. All right, I'm gonna start supper then before Rudy gets home. Right, the kids and I will be off. See you on Sunday. As always. Abigail takes out some pots and pans. <laughs> she turns to listen, a door closes. She puts down the pots and turns toward the table, collapsing into a chair. She takes out her phone and looks around. <laughs> Fertility. How pregnancy works. <laughs> How to prevent conception without birth control. Oh, there's an app. Okay. Uh, <laughs> download. Okay, how do we clear this history? Abigail's phone. Ah. Oh. Hi, honey. Hi. Uh, no. Ellen just left. It's just me now. Oh, get back to work then. All right. I love you too. I'll see you soon. One week later, loud banging is heard. Abigail's children are making noise, and she is failing to cook adequately. A huge pile of dishes sits on the counter. Abigail sings hymns to her children while making vaguely affirming and frantic noises at them. A knock is heard. What on earth? What? Oh no, Jack, be gentle with your sister. Another knock. Coming! Abigail opens the door to Rebecca and Renee. They enter, holding a basket of muffins. Hello, we thought we'd bring you some muffins. We've been baking all day. We asked Mother and she said we could bring some over. Well, that's very thoughtful. Thank you. I think Lucy is crying. Yes, yes, that happens. Uh, let me get her. Abigail goes inside to comfort her daughter. Renee and Rebecca wait awkwardly. Ab Abigail peeks her head back out. Oh, right, come in, come in. The young women gather around the dining table. So you've been baking? All day, yes. Us and Regina, Rachel, Rosalie, and Ruby. <laughs> All the girls today. Not like anything Rosie and Ruby make is edible. They truly have servants' hearts, though. I learn from them every day. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hold on a second. No, let me. I love my nephews. I got this. Abigail and Renee sit awkwardly. Will you allow me to help with your dishes? Sorry. When we were baking earlier and found ourselves with extras, I felt that God was calling me to bring them to you, and now I see how I can be of service. I think God has called you to clean my house. <coughs> I just feel that he has been leading me to where I can best serve others. Sorry, Renee, be my guest. I would be delighted for the help. It's just been more work with three kids than I expected. Have you prayed for God's guidance? Every day. My sister Ellen was here last week and helped out, but she has responsibilities of her own. Your kids are a handful, Abby. Tell me about it. Abigail was just telling me about how overwhelmed she has been feeling. I hear a lot of new mothers feel that way. Luckily, we are so close by. We should start coming by and hanging out more often. Oh, that would be nice. Rebecca. Yeah? Did you just think of that? That's a wonderful idea. <laughs> coming over? Yes. This is excellent testimony to the importance of staying home before marriage. Look how we can serve others. Do you think Father will allow us to come over? We shall certainly ask him to pray about it. We should do it right now. Text him and ask him if he will allow us to spend more time with our sister in law. <laughs> All right, let me get my phone. Wait, mention that you think we could best serve others by helping a struggling family member. It's not like I'm any use in the kitchen. I can't say that. Then they'll surely ask you home. How will you be married if you can't manage to cook meals for your husband? Mother will make you cook for everyone. Okay, don't say that. I don't want to impose or anything. I would love the help, but not at the sake of inconveniencing your mother. Oh, mother loves you. She couldn't be more pleased to have you as her daughter-in-law. 
she built you up as a great example of a Titus II wife. You know, the aged women, who may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste keepers at home. Um, Renee, I think that's... Say that, say that. Tell Daddy that <laughs> Abigail is guiding us spiritually and helping us prepare for life as married women. You're even courting. I am. Well, no, but maybe. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I'll tell you about it later. Rebecca is smitten. I am not. He's all right is all. He is a godly man. Call Father. Ask, ask if he can be of any assistance to Abigail. I feel truly called as a stay-at-home daughter to serve her family. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? I will once I pray about it. <laughs> Renee dials. Rebecca leans over her pushily. Abigail gets a drink of water. Hello? Hi, it's Renee. Hi, Daddy. How are you? Oh, that's wonderful. Hurry up. The little ones are playing harp in church this weekend. Oh, God is good. <laughs> Ask him. <laughs> So I'm calling because, as you know, Rebecca and I are the Abigails. Yes, and Abigail is having such a hard time now that Lucy is getting a little bigger. Rebecca and I feel that we might be a great asset to her by visiting more often. Yes, we both feel Ab Abigail is such a great wife and mother who truly walks with Jesus. <laughs> All right, thank you. I look forward to it. See you soon. What do you say? He asked us to come home so that we could pray about it as a family. Oh, don't worry about me. I can do this, but that's good. Best we could hope for. He asked that we come home right now, though. Renee and Rebecca gather their belongings. Thank you for coming. Even if it's just infrequently, I really appreciate the help. You two truly have servants' hearts. I am so blessed to have you and the rest of your family as my in-laws. Thanks, Abby. We love you, too. I know that either way, God will provide for you. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. The Quinn home. Ellen is standing at a table laden with books, speaking at unseen children. All right, children. Today's character quality is endurance. <laughs> Can anyone tell me what endurance means? That's very close, Elodie. Endurance means the ability to withstand pain and hardship. <laughs> it's when you are able to go through really unpleasant and difficult times because you know the end result is worth it. And it's behave. <laughs> How does endurance differ from giving up? That's very true. They are opposites. Let's see what the Bible has to say about it. Endurance. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now what do you think God meant by that? One week later, Abigail and Rebecca stand at the kitchen sink, hand-washing dishes in their pajamas. I can't believe Rudy isn't home yet. Well, you know him, working hard to bring home the money while I stay home and shape young minds. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. That's what drew me to Rudy, you know. Your desire to submit to him? No, no. I have seen your family in church and spoken with a few of you. I always admired that in conversations, your siblings were all so able to have the perfect verse for any occasion. My father had met your brother in a Bible study group and impressed me the strength of his character, that he was a good and godly man, curious but committed to the Lord. He felt we were similar in that way. I spent my childhood reading as many of my dad's books as I could. I remember arguing about dispensationalism versus covenant theology as a child. I don't even think I was riding a bike at that point. Anyway, my dad introduced us at church. He said, Mr. Turner, I'd like you to meet my daughter, Abigail. I think you two could have interesting discussions on theology. You are similarly struck with an appreciation of God's word. And as my dad stood there, your brother, he just smiled at me and said, and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Pleased to meet you, Miss Anderson. And I think I just knew. <laughs> of course, Dad had vetted him, and he had at least a longtime member of the church and had proven testimony. We courted, and we discussed the Bible for hours. But it was then that I knew. Just then. Rebecca looks mildly ill. <laughs> <laughs> I admired you greatly during your courtship. Oh, thank you. No, I did. 
I saw you with my brother and how you both put the Lord first in your relationship, and I just, I just wanted a relationship like that. I will pray that God finds you a suitable match, that you will too find a man who loves the Lord as much as Ruby does. No, I'm not jealous. Or maybe I am. I should work on that. I will pray about it. I, I just, how did you know? You say you knew, but how did you know? I think I was just really, really head over feet in love with your brother. I can't explain it. My father thinks, and maybe yours does too, but my father thinks that any man and any woman can make a marriage work as long as they put the Lord at the center of their relationship. A, man, a woman will submit to her husband and a man to God, and he will leave the home to earn a wage in return, and she will raise the children, and their disputes will be solved through obedience to God. Do you believe that? I believe that Rudy and I have worked so well thus far because we both have serving God as our common goal. But I think it helps that we have similar dispositions. We can both be quiet and prone to bookishness. But when you met him, did he attract you besides his work? If you are asking me if I lusted after your brother, the answer is absolutely not. We were quite chaste. We didn't even hold hands until our engagement. You chaperoned us. Oh, no, sorry. So sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I would never doubt your character or your chastity. Just, like, did you find him handsome? Oh, of course I found your brother handsome. He has such a pleasant countenance. I thought for sure our children would be cheerful like that, but I was just very careful to maintain purity of the spirit as well as the body. Our physical relationship came later, and we built that as a couple, as one does. Are you struggling somehow? No, it's not that. I'm not taken with lust, if that's what you're saying. But what are you saying, then? You know the young man I'm thinking about courting. I think we've met, yes. I've been drawn to him by his strong convictions and his enthusiasm for letting the Lord decide his future in all ways. He is a hard worker and pleasant to be around. Sounds wonderful. I'm just not sure if it's right. To court him? I mean, I'm ready. I'm older than you were when you were married. By years, I've been serving obediently at home. I know that I am ready to be a wife, to be a mother. But you don't think it's right with this man? Or any man. <laughs> I can't think of a single man that I've met that I've thought I could see myself growing old with and raising children right. Perhaps it's just difficult for you to imagine as you have never known a life like that. Being married is not like being a daughter. You leave your family and cleave unto your new husband and make a family all of your own. It's a little bit scary even. I, I know he can provide for me. He went to college. He has a great job. I just, I just think I need to work on my contentment. There's nothing wrong with him. But if he's not right, he's not right. Pray on it. I just feel like something's missing. Like, I should be feeling things I'm not. I'm not longing to be more worldly. I don't want to go to college or have a job or be a feminist or anything silly or frivolous like that. <laughs> I know where I ought to be, but... But? I don't know that I much want a husband. What? I don't know. Perhaps you should pray with your father about this, Rebecca. I'm sorry. I'll do that. I'll see him tomorrow. Thank you for allowing me to stay. I'm sorry I shouldn't have burdened you with my woes. I'm always here for you, Rebecca. You have helped tremendously these past weeks. I would be more than overwhelmed without you. God has truly blessed me with such a doting sister-in-law. I should just say yes. Do whatever God leads you to. The next morning, Abigail is crying at the kitchen table. Rebecca enters, still in her pajamas. Abby, what's wrong? Rudy lost his job. Oh no, that's terrible. He showed up this morning and they told him they had to let him go, but times were slow and it was impossible to keep everyone on. And they picked him. He had the shortest amount of time. Oh, that's awful. The kids are playing out back and Lucy's taking an early nap. Praise. I just don't know how we're going to manage this. It's fine. It's going to be okay. He left right after he told me, going around to ask family and friends if any of them have work that needs to be done. He'll find something. He's tough. He's a good worker. We haven't caught much savings. Do you want to pray about it with me? Would that help? Have you been sitting in despair all morning by yourself? Sorry. We need to get it together. It's not becoming for a mother to act like this. God will provide for you, Abigail. You've put all your trust in him, and he shall repay you. But I haven't. I've been so terrible. I've gone against God's wishes in so many ways. Abigail, we are all sinners, and Jesus loves us just the same. He died for our sins, 
and by his grace alone you are saved. He had willfully disobeyed. Then repent and be sorry. God's forgiveness inspires us all. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That what you do is not your salvation, Abigail. You know this. I don't want to. I can't. I'm scared. I can't do this. Sounds of vomiting are heard. Uh, are, are you all right? Sorry. I didn't mean that. My anxiety is getting the better of me. There is an awkwardly long pause, like you could maybe boil water in this length of time, but probably only a cup of water. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get Lucy. A few days later, Abigail, Ellen, Rebecca, and Renee sit around Abigail's kitchen table. Both Abigail and Ellen have babies in slings. A birthday cake sits in the middle of the table. I just wanted to say it's been a true blessing having my older sister here today as well as two of my sisters in marriage. You three have been so supportive of me during my first years of marriage and I can only hope that the next six go as well as the first six did. It hasn't been easy, but Rudy and I have committed ourselves to the Lord, and through him all things are possible. Through rough times, it has been so helpful to have you by my side. God has provided you with a wonderful husband, Abigail. That's all his work. We are only here to help guide your way. Yes, but there is no one else I'd rather share my table with on Lucy's first birthday. I'm so blessed to have such wonderful aunts leading my daughter by example. May she grow up to be just as humble and God-fearing. Amen. Rudy will certainly find work soon, with faith in God. I pray that he will, but for now, cake! Abigail cuts each of her sisters a slice of cake. She serves herself one, takes a bite, and promptly covers her mouth with her hand. Are you all right? Abigail runs to the bathroom. Vomiting sounds are heard again. I think she has a bit of a bug. She was sick a few days ago, too. I thought it was just nerves. Ellen follows Abigail towards the bathroom. Mother is so proud of you for selflessly serving Abigail like you do. She's kind to put me up. I wish that I too could be here to serve Abigail, but I trust Father's wisdom in keeping me home. Ellen knocks on the bathroom door. Abigail pees in a cup, waits three minutes, <laughs> Abigail, are you all right? Fine, just a touch of the plague, I think. Do you need some water? Uh, water would be nice. I'll be out in a moment. Ellen returns to the table. Is she okay? She'll be fine. It must be nerves. You know, you must be right, Becca. Has she thrown up more than this? Actually, I do think she threw up yesterday, too. Maybe some sort of 48-hour bug? Mm, that must be it. Abigail looks down at a pregnancy test like Jesus himself slapped her. Shit. <laughs> Abigail pockets the test, exits the bathroom, and returns to the kitchen. How are you feeling, Abigail? Oh, sorry, a bit queasy. I'll be fine. Why don't you two clean up and I'll see if I can't get Miss Sick over here to bed. Are you sure? I've got that, certainly. No, no. no. Sister's responsibility, you know. Ellen corners Abigail, who's brushing her teeth. All right. Spill, sister. I'm pregnant. Yes! I haven't told Rudy, so don't go telling people. Wait, did you just find out? Just now. Oh my gosh! Why aren't you more excited? I'm already overwhelmed and I've got Rebecca cleaning up after me all day. Children are a blessing. They won't always be little. You need to enjoy it now. How can I enjoy anything when I'm cleaning all day? Soon they'll be old enough to help like we did for mom. I didn't want this, okay? I was happy with three. Wait, is this why you were asking me if I had thought about how many kids I wanted to have? I thought you just found out. I did just find out. Abigail, what are you saying? I hoped this wouldn't happen. Well, God doesn't work like that. He doesn't care what you want. He has a plan for us all. Okay, well, this wasn't in my plan. Are you saying you took measures to prevent this child from existing? I didn't do anything unnatural. I didn't take anything. We didn't use anything. You took measures to avoid conception. You tracked yourself. Well, I didn't do a very good job now, did I? This is so far from the life mom and dad sacrificed to make possible for us, Abigail. This is so disrespectful to them. And God. Well, there's nothing I can do about it now. I learned my lesson. There, are you happy? No! How can you not see what a big deal this is? You've all but made an onanist out of your husband. I have done no such thing. Wait, does Rudy even know about this? No, and you will not tell him. I cannot believe this. My own sister. Don't you remember your marriage vows? Of course I remember. 
I need some time to pray about this. I'll be downstairs. Ellen goes back downstairs. Is she all right now? Yeah, I think she'll sleep it off. A bit of temporary excitement, I think. Abigail is very even-tempered. She will be right as rain soon, I imagine. <laughs> I, I hope so. Please try to keep her in your prayers tonight. I think it might be best if you two went home for a bit. I'll mind Abigail. Well, they are gone now. That's probably best. What were you thinking? I couldn't handle more kids. I'm so overwhelmed and scared as it is. The Lord alleviated your woes by being, bringing Rebecca to you. Is that not sign enough that he provides? I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Put your faith in the Lord, for he will provide. And what am I to do when she gets married, and I have four kids, and then five, and then six? They won't always be little. I'm not mom. I'm not cut out for this. Don't say that. This is your sacred calling. This is your responsibility as a woman. I can't think of another option. I am leaving. I will pray for you. You are setting a terrible example for your children. You will regret this. The Turner home. Renee sits on stairs outside of her house reading a well-thumbed Bible. Rebecca runs outside and thrusts her hand in front of Renee's face. He proposed. Praise the Lord, for he is good. You must be thrilled. I am pleased. The girls sit in silence. Rebecca fiddles with her wedding ring. Do you think that the Lord will provide a godly man for me to marry? I've been praying that he will. That's all we can do. I suppose. The Quinn home. Ellen enters stiff-backed with a stack of books. You know, Elodie, I'm very disappointed in your progress. I don't think you are exemplifying good character right now. Do you? Please go pray about your behavior so that God might lead you towards being more obedient. Now please. A soft knock is heard. Abigail answers the door to a distraught Rebecca. They sit on Abigail's front porch and Rebecca cries. What happened? I don't know. I freaked out. I couldn't go through with it. The engagement. It's all too fast. All of it. I don't know what I'm doing. It was fast. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have come. I just should tell him how I feel. You feel that's right. I think so. Rebecca looks up to see Abigail rubbing her stomach. Wait. Are you pregnant? I am. Congratulations! Thank you. You don't seem happy. I am happy God saw fit to bless a sinner as me with a child. But, but I would have preferred to keep my quiver small. And go against God's desires? Are your desires not similarly contrary to God's plan? Have I been so transparent? I'm in no place to judge. Won't you? Abigail sits down on the bench next to Rebecca. What a pair we make. Sometimes I think it's not supposed to go like this. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I don't feel rested. I just feel more conflicted. Alan would say it's because you're choosing sin, that the right decision always lays light upon the sin. And what do you think? Last night when I was praying, all I could think about was this verse that Ellen used to repeat when we were kids and I wanted something that she had. She never told me not to be covetous. No, she would just say, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. It kept running in my mind, but I am called to contentment with the station I am given, and to want for nothing, for God will provide. How do you stop wanting something bigger, something better? I think you'll always wonder until one day you just don't. How do you know which path God is leading you down and which path others are telling you God is leading you down? You don't. You just need to have faith that you're doing the right thing. So I'm going to go home and I'm going to have this baby and I'm going to love this fucking baby <laughs> so much that one day my great-grandchildren will hear about it and I'm going to tell my husband I love him and we are going to be a family because that is the station I've been given. My doubts serve no purpose to it because I'm part of something that is bigger than me. I just thought I would be happier. 
you know, happier and more content. You will have all of eternity to be happy. So for now, learn to pretend. <laughs> <laughs>